First of all, I'd like to thank Amar and his amazing team at ZenMade for inviting me to speak at the second annual ZenMade Summit. I'm thrilled to be included among some very high profile, knowledgeable speakers, and I hope you'll take the opportunity to listen to all of the talks so you can gather a wealth of information to grow your cleaning business. My name is Irene Zibben, and I currently run my own residential cleaning business in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. I also help and teach others to grow their cleaning and maid service businesses through my online course. My talk today is about how to grow and automate your maid service to eliminate physical burnout. I know cleaning is hard work. I've been where you are or where you might be right now, but I've grown my business to the point where I do the managing, scheduling, marketing, and admin for my business without doing the physical part. And I'm never going back to cleaning long hours every day. Today, I'll be sharing some of the steps to growing my business that took me 12 years to learn. So you can start enjoying more money, energy, and free time now. I know you want more profit, more energy, and free time without the physical grind. You want to scale your cleaning business so that you can do less physical cleaning and more managing. There's no doubt that the cleaning business can be very lucrative, but if you try to do everything yourself, including long hours of cleaning, you could experience physical burnout. So before I get started on how to grow and automate your cleaning business, I want to talk about the slippery slope of physical burnout. Physical burnout can happen to anyone, and those of us who run our own cleaning businesses are especially vulnerable. I started my cleaning business 12 years ago in Peachland, British Columbia. It's a small community with a population of approximately 5,500, but it was a gold mine for me because there were a lot of people who needed and could afford my cleaning services. I cleaned by myself at first, working anywhere from three to eight hours a day. And let me tell you, eight hours a day wasn't easy. In those early days, I took on almost every customer who called me so I could build my business. When I started to get more cleaning clients, I hired a part-time employee to help me. And shortly afterwards, I hired another part-time employee so that I had someone to help me every day. That, day, that way I could fit more clients in and make more money. I cleaned five days a week. Back then I had my employees work along with me because I didn't know anything about sending employees out on their own. I was worried they'd slack off or leave early if I wasn't there to manage everything and keep them on track. I guess you could say I was a micromanager. So I worked hard physically day after day week after week and month after month because I was making good money and I needed it to pay the bills. Plus, I loved being my own boss. I worked at growing my business for a few years. Then I decided to move to Abbotsford, British Columbia, so I could be closer to my family. And I started my business all over from scratch. At first I cleaned by myself. And then when I started getting busier and booked up, I once again hired two part-time employees. I was cleaning five days a week, one week, and six days a week on alternate weeks. And that was fine up until a few years ago when I started to feel the wear and tear on my body. Cleaning for long hours was wearing me down. When I came home in the evenings, I ate a quick supper, then relaxed on the sofa or laid in my bed watching Netflix. I didn't want to do anything else because I was too tired. I needed to rest to make sure I had enough energy to get me through the next busy day. During the days while I clean, I can actually remember closing my eyes as I scrubbed showers 
And when I came home for lunch every day, I sat in a special leather stressless chair to relax and help regain my energy. During those days, I often considered quitting my cleaning business and going back to a nine to five job, but I decided against it because I made more money at cleaning. And after being self-employed for so many years, I couldn't stand the thought of someone telling me what to do. So I kept cleaning despite the aches and pains and fatigue that dominated my evenings and weekends. I found myself wishing I could take a super long holiday so I could rest, but I couldn't take the time off. I needed to work to keep the money coming in so I could pay my bills every month. I was busy all the time. I had no time to enjoy the simple things in life like gardening, shopping, or spending leisure time with my family. Even having the time to repot my houseplants was an out of reach luxury. I was stuck in a rut. Cleaning long hours was sucking the energy out of me and I found myself actually becoming jealous of people who didn't have to clean for a living. I knew things had to change, but what could I do? I tried adding other services to my clients, things that wouldn't require the physical output of house cleaning like pet sitting, offering a shopping service to my customers, and offering a car or detailing, you know, system, but, um, you know, to clean their vehicles. But no one, no one seemed to be interested in, in any of these services. My customers simply wanted and needed house cleaning. I knew there were other professional maid services out there where the owners simply managed things and didn't go out to clean with the team every day. I wanted to be like them. I wanted to manage my business instead of doing all the cleaning. But where would I start? I didn't have the money to buy a cleaning franchise. I simply had no idea where to begin. So I kept putting one foot in front of the other, cleaning day after day, week after week and month after month. At the start of every week, I looked in the mirror at my tired reflection and asked myself if this was all there was to life. I wanted to have more time and energy to enjoy the simple things in life again, but I couldn't give up my cleaning business. I needed the money. I didn't know where to turn. I knew I had to make some changes to the way I was running my business. I had to stop working myself to death. Then one day my sister phoned me. She also had and still has a cleaning business in the Okanagan Valley, British Columbia. She was scheduled for a hip operation and was in the process of expanding her business because she wouldn't be able to do any physical cleaning after her operation. She explained how she would accomplish expanding her business and growing her teams and I listened intently. From somewhere within me, I got a surge of hope. If the business expansion worked for her, it could work for me too. I could actually build my business up so I wouldn't have to work so hard. So I decided I would copy my sister. What did I have to lose? I had to make this work because if I didn't, I would be stuck working long hours with a sore back or even worse. What if I injured myself and I could no longer clean? How would I live? How would I pay my bills with no money coming in? I had two choices. I could keep cleaning long hours and scrub myself into the ground, or I could put my energy into growing my business. I chose to grow my business. My sister soon had six employees and was at the most lucrative stage of her business, and I was following right behind her in her footsteps. One of the first things I did to grow my business was hire more employees to do the actual cleaning. Once I had more employees, I was able to gradually decrease the, decrease the time I spent cleaning every day and I was able to devote more time to focusing on administrative tasks such as booking and scheduling and advertising to get more customers from my growing team. I felt like I was in heaven. I was finally able to let my body rest and I even started to enjoy simple things like gardening, shopping, and visiting with my family.
my business was growing. I had more employees. I increased my advertising efforts and I was getting more new customers. So of course my paperwork increased dramatically. Back then I was using a large desk calendar and writing all of my schedule out by hand. I had to transfer all of my recurring appointments by hand from one month to the next. It was tedious and frustrating, especially when a customer requested a change I wanted to scream. And providing the staff with the paper schedule became a nightmare. I had to text my staff every time there was a change in the schedule. At that time, I was giving all of my staff a paper schedule and I had to reprint it every time there was a change. It was a real pain. I spent hours and hours on the schedule every week. I printed out Excel sheets for the staff to record their hours. Then I had them send me a picture of their time sheet so I could do the payroll. I also had to send my customer invoices from a separate app, so I was all over the place. As well, I had to send client reminders manually to reduce the risk of no-shows. I'm sure my staff and clients didn't appreciate all the text messages they were receiving from me. The schedule took up most of my evenings and weekends. So to save time, I worked on the schedule whenever I could. Once while I was sitting at a table in the waiting area of the Nissan dealership while my car was being serviced, a man approached me and asked me if that was the biggest calendar I could find. I'm sure he was joking, but it got me thinking that there had to be an easier way to manage my business. And I realized I had to get with the times and find an online schedule to make my life easier. Once I set up automated scheduling and invoicing, my life became so much easier and I had a lot more free time. With an automated schedule, you can save all of your client information and even input specific notes for each job. Your staff can access their schedules online and they can access the built-in GPS so they'll always know where they're going. You can send invoices directly from your scheduling app so you get paid faster. And you'll be able to update any changes to the schedule quickly and accurately, even while you're out and about. You can also keep track of timesheets for your staff and process your payroll easier. Automating your schedule will definitely save you tons of time every week with the management of your team and your growing customer base. To tell you the truth, I couldn't live without an automated scheduling system now. It would be like living in the dark ages. Automating your schedule and invoicing as soon as possible will give you more time to enjoy life and more time to focus on growing your business. Then, after you've hired more employees, booked more customers, automated your schedule and your payment systems, and your business is growing, you won't have to work as hard and you're going to love it. It might seem like a lot of work to grow your business, but it's really not that hard. I wish you good luck and I would love to help you grow your business so you don't have to work so hard. So please visit me on Instagram or Facebook and let's connect. Thank you for watching my talk and I hope you got a lot out of it.